Hey, welcome back to YT Finance, and this is the channel where I went to business school so you didn't have to, and today we are talking about SoFi Technologies SOFI stock, and the reason why you want to check out this video right now is because tomorrow is their earnings report, so we're going to go over their projections for their quarter four earnings report to predict whether the stock price is going to go up or down if you want to trade off of the volatility. Or if you are a long-term investor of SoFi Technologies, this is going to tell you how the company has been performing and if it's continuously growing its over overall customer base. So we're going to use the projections from Zacks, and Zacks consensus estimate for revenues is around $275.52 million, which would actually indicate just less than half of a percent decline in their overall revenues from their three main business segments, which would include lending, financial services, and their technology platform, and we will talk more about their technology platform later in this video. The Zacks consensus estimate for their earnings, or EPS, for the quarter currently stands at a loss of 16 cents per share. And to put that into perspective, the loss for their EPS in the third quarter, according to the article, was a loss of 5 cents per share for the third quarter of 2021. Now, whether you like Zacks or not, this is just going to give us projections because let's say they beat both of these predictions for their EPS as well as their revenues, that's just going to be overall good news, even if these projections are more bearish than normal. Zacks also has a proprietary ranking system on a scale from 1, 2, and 3, with Zacks ranks number 1 coming in as a strong buy, a rating of a 2 says to buy the stock, and a rating of 3 says to hold the company. And right now, SoFi Technologies has a hold rating according to Zacks. Now, you all know me, I really do like SoFi Technologies, so it doesn't matter if the stock price is going to go down after the earnings report. I am just going to buy more of this company because I am in this company for the long term, and analysts are actually very bullish about this company, and we will talk more about that later when we talk about their technology platform segment. Currently, the SOFI stock price trades for around $11.54 right now, which is actually really good because their low-end analyst price target is actually $14 for the next 12 months. The the average price consensus among analysts is $17.95, again above the stock's current price of around $11, and their high-end price prediction according to analysts is $22 over the next 12 months. Right now, 11 analysts from Wall Street cover this stock, and 8 of these analysts say to buy the stock, while 3 of these analysts say that the stock is a clear hold right now for long-term opportunity. However, none of these 11 analysts say to sell the SoFi stock, so even after the earnings report, this could be be a good buying opportunity. Now, sometimes after earnings reports, analysts will actually adjust their price targets depending on what the company actually brought in for their EPS and their revenues among a plethora of other financial metrics, so please be aware of that. Analysts are not right 100% of the time, or even the majority of the time in my opinion, however it does give us a good base about what Wall Street and how Wall Street is currently valuing the stock. Now, Zacks actually gives us three other companies that they think are very good, even better than SoFi Technologies, so we will briefly go over those because again, I want to expose you all to as many stocks as possible to bolster your overall portfolio. The first one is Every Holdings, ticker symbol EVRI, and the current stock price for Every is around $23.30, while the low-end 12-month price target is $28, the average price consensus among analysts for the next 12 months is $32.13, while the high-end price prediction is $40. Again, we see here that the low-end price target, which is $28, is actually higher than the stock's current price of only $23.30. Eight analysts from Wall Street currently cover this stock, and they all say that this is a good buying opportunity for every holdings, while none of them say to hold and none of them say to sell. So this could be a good investment opportunity if you want to do more DD on your own time, which I would encourage you to do. Never take my word for anything, always remember to do your own research. I am just here to expose you to information, different views, and potentially good stocks. The next one that Zacks actually recommends for people buying SoFi Technologies is a stock that I personally am not too bullish on, which is Nielsen Holdings, ticker symbol NLSN. So Nielsen Holdings currently trades for a around a $17.58, however their 5 year graph is extremely negative, which is why I personally am not bullish on the company. Currently the stock trades for around a $17.57, which is higher than their low end 12 month price target according to analysts, which is $16, their average price consensus is $24.64, while their high end price prediction is $35. So ideally we would only want to buy stocks below the low end price prediction, and right now the NLSN stock is not doing that for us, however, if you want more information on the company, remember 
remember to do your own research. Lastly, Zax recommends Clear Channel Outdoor Holdings, ticker symbol CCO. Now, this company, again, I am not personally bullish on, but I do want to expose you guys to various stocks, even if I personally am not bullish to it, because we all have different investing styles and goals. The current stock price for this company is $3.79, while the low end price prediction is $3.50. So again, ideally, we wouldn't want to buy the stock at its current price. The average price consensus is $4.18, while the high end price prediction is $5. Now, out of these three companies, the only one I would consider buying is Every Holdings, even though I do think it's trading very high right now. However, I like SoFi Technologies better than all of these particular companies that they have highlighted here. Now, I want to talk about their recent acquisition, and I do have a more in-depth video on this, but I want to talk about how it's going to improve SoFi's overall revenues, future profitability, and various other financial metrics, particularly coming from their technology platform. So, recently, if you didn't know, SoFi Technologies acquired a company named Technosys in an all-stock deal valued at around $1.1 billion, and this is a core processing company that enables various banks to carry out the management of deposits, the management of loans, and other types of transactions, and since SoFi Technology is now an official bank because they have a bank charter, this is going to come in handy for SoFi in the long term. Now, the reason I say that is once we get into the actual revenues and money spent on this company to receive benefit from this acquisition has caused investors to liquidate some of their stocks, and we'll get into more of that later. Buying Technosys was a good idea in my opinion, however, it was sort of expensive, coming in at around $1.1 billion, which is roughly 13% of SoFi's current market capitalization, which is pretty large. Now, this article actually highlights how SoFi Technologies can be the next Amazon Web Services of FinTech, and that is a huge claim, so let's go into what they mean by this. SoFi, if you didn't know, is a FinTech company that has an all-in-one digital app. They are literally a digital banking company, which allows the company to save a lot of money on brick and mortar and actual real estate, rent, and various utilities that regular banks have to pay. SoFi is also diversified in three various segments that we went over, and their Galileo platform allows banks to optimize back-end infrastructure that powers the operations of many other fintech companies and even neobanks, according to the article. The ability to process payments like debit card transactions and even direct ACH transfers is something that all financial institutions need to be very effective and efficient at doing. Now, Technosys specifically should actually complement their Galileo platform because Technosys is the next generation of banking systems. The reason I say this is because currently, banks are using very old legacy software and technology, some of which was developed back in the 1970s. So this software is very old and various banks and neobanks as well as fintech institutions need Technosys' technology to actually compete in the global market right now. Technosys can support a multitude of various digital products on one core system, and this actually enables it to be ran from the cloud while also analyzing data in real time. This allows companies and firms to connect different types of softwares to one another in order to make the overall process more seamless. So if SoFi brings together Galileo and Technosys, which is what they're doing, they can literally become the next Amazon Web Services of FinTech. The cooperability between Galileo and Technosys is absolutely paramount to the success of SoFi Technologies' future. SoFi's CEO even said that the cross-selling opportunities between Technosys products and Galileo's 100 plus partners on top of Technosys's 60 plus customers is going to be a fantastic synergistic relationship between these two platforms because both are focused on back-end infrastructure for fintech companies, neobanks, and other financial institutions. SoFi Technology currently plans to use their Galileo platform to build on top of new capabilities regarding their Technosys platform, and this would include secured as well as unsecured credit credit cards, various reward programs, and buy now pay later capabilities, and those are all huge markets. It's going to open up SoFi's total addressable market, or TAM, by a very large margin. And this is extremely bullish news for SoFi Technologies overall. It seems right now that SoFi is focusing on the core processing space. And this is fantastic news that is going to generate SoFi Technologies more revenues, which we will talk about a little later in the video. The Galileo CEO said that Galileo powers around 95% of digital banking transactions in North America, and 70 of the top 100 fintech companies are clients to the Galileo platform. This not only means that Galileo is a 
extremely good and their technology works for a plethora of high-end fintech companies, it's also going to allow SoFi to successfully penetrate the core processing space. But what does this mean for financials? Will this acquisition pay off and when will it pay off? Well, right now, SoFi's financials are looking pretty good. However, SoFi paying around $1.1 billion worth of stock will dilute shareholders, which is why the SoFi stock price actually went down. The management of SoFi Technologies expects this company to pay for itself through 2026 to 2027. And that means that the acquisition is actually going to generate around $500 million to $800 million of additional revenue by the end of 2025 for SoFi Technologies. So although it's going to take three to five years for this company and acquisition to actually make up for itself and pay for itself, anything past that is going to be pure profits. More good news is that SoFi is actually going to use this as an opportunity to move their checking and savings account products as well as their credit card products to Technisys and Galileo platforms over the next two to four years. This would result in around an $80 million cost savings between 2023 and 2025. And past 2025, it's going to save them around $65 million annually. So not only are they saving $80 million to $65 million per year after 2025, they're also gaining money. So that means this acquisition is more than going to pay for itself over the long term. So if you are a long term bullish investor in SoFi Technologies, this is going to be fantastic news for you. Now, the only thing that is slightly concerning is that the author of this article points out that SoFi Technologies, instead of buying and acquiring Galileo and Technisys, they technically could have just used the Galileo platform and Technisys by paying for it and not acquiring these overall companies. Now, I personally think it was good that they acquired Galileo and Technisys because these companies are paying for themselves, which is fantastic news. So although the core processing market is highly competitive, I think SoFi Technologies can penetrate that market, which will reflect very positively for their overall earnings as well as their overall revenues. But tomorrow we're going to find out what their revenues and EPS comes in at, and we will see what analysts think of this if they decide to adjust any of their price targets. But I would love to hear your thoughts down below. Subscribe if you are new, like this video right now if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next YT video.